Hey there, what's going on? I'm Andy, I'm a self-taught programmer, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about the five reasons why you're not gonna become a programmer anytime soon. And they come from my experience of talking to a wide range of people, people who are aspiring developers, and seeing patterns of behavior of things that really hold people back. And my goal in this video is to really shine a light on some of the mistakes that you may be making so that you can overcome them and so you don't get stuck really trying to take years to figure this out and really take it down to a matter of months if possible. Now, if you're new here and you're wondering who I am, I'm Andy Sterkwitz. I'm a self-taught programmer, but I'm also a mentor and coach to everyday people who are aspiring developers. So I help them really get strategies to learn a skill set to a high degree, as well as figure out strategies for landing that first job. So if you're interested in content like that, I highly recommend hitting the subscribe button below, but also make sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications anytime I put out a new video. So with that being said, let's not waste any time here, let's get right into it. So the first mistake that I see people make as far as getting into programming is they really treat this as a purely academic pursuit, meaning they think that because you know the whole term computer science is thrown around that if computer science is a science that you can just treat this like you know, I don't know chemistry or biology or physics and if you just get all the books on those subjects that you can just go through them and you'll become a chemist or a biologist or something like that. And that'd be a nice comforting thing to think, but unfortunately programming doesn't quite work that way. Uh, learning about programming uh, through learning resources like tutorials or books, that's a really important start. But in order for you to become a, a programmer who can do something with those programming languages that you're gonna use, you have to get down to the nitty gritty of building projects, building things, and using those programming languages. So don't be the person who is gonna wait six months before you start building something. Like, to be totally honest with you, you don't have to wait even a couple weeks before you start. You can start coding within your first week. In other words, you can download a code editor and just start hammering away. So don't think you have to wait. Don't think you have to get everything in line. You have to learn every single concept before you can start. Start early, start often get your hands dirty and use those learning resources to help you with the things that you're going to be doing, the projects you're going to be doing, and you're going to be much better off. You weren't going to be held back for months. The second thing that I see really hold people back is perfectionism. And by the way, I'm a total, totally guilty of being a perfectionist, so it's okay. But the thing is, in software development, perfectionism can really hold you back. I see this a lot in people who are going to start building their portfolios. They think that their projects have to be perfect like they have to be to the nines like they have to rebuild i always say like airbnb or they have to rebuild facebook or twitter and they have to make it fully functional and they have to make the styling perfect and unfortunately the reason that that can be very detrimental to your progress is because i've seen a lot of people who will just build projects and they build what i call you know an mvp or what's called an mvp meaning minimum viable product they just build it they get it completed to a pretty much you know the satisfactory degree and then they move on to a next project. And then you just keep building projects and keep finishing things. And that person is much more farther along than the person who thinks that like they have to have everything be perfect because that's the only way that you can be a programmer. So don't get stuck in this. The same thing comes to your study habits. Like, look, if you think you have to sit down and get like a four or five hour study session in each time and it has to be perfect and you have to make perfect progress, you're gonna really struggle because that's not reality. The truth of the matter is, is you're gonna have study sessions where you feel like no progress is made. Sometimes you can only sit down for an hour because you just can't sit there and focus on uh, uh, figuring out like why your app isn't working for longer than that. So you have to get used to having these study sessions that aren't perfect, where you're not making progress, where things are just stuck because that's what life as a developer is. Sometimes you're just stuck and you can't figure things out. So really take back those uh, perfectionist tendencies as much as you can it's going to help you make progress over feeling like everything has to be perfect the next thing that i see that holds people back is just their fear right i started out talking about how people think this is an academic pursuit more or less well a lot of people who think that they get this fear built up about building projects so they get really comfortable in learning right they get very comfortable with these concepts it's like a warm blanket like ah oh, new concept epiphany here epiphany there but they start to build a fear up of actually opening up a code editor and typing in code and building something because that's uncomfortable. And by the way, when you start building something, uh, when you start building projects, you get a lot of feedback that you don't know what the hell you're doing because you have never done it before and there's no, you know, there's no blueprint for it. 
And so people get oh, very, very afraid of that. And also people get afraid of finishing projects because guess what? Uh, if you finish a project, you have to go on to the next project that's gonna be a little bit more challenging. Or maybe your next project, once that's finished, you're gonna start applying for jobs. And if you're fearful of that, you may subconsciously be like, you know what, I actually need to work on my styling of my project more. And so you may delay completing that project because you just you have a fear of finishing and fear of going on to that next thing. So look, at the end of the day, the best developers I know can step outside their comfort zone. If they don't know a certain skill set, they don't know a certain programming language, they know that to get to that next level in their career, or really just get to that next level that they need to go to, they have to step outside their comfort zone, go to the very bottom, humble themselves, and start at the very bottom and say, okay, you know what, I don't know anything, let's start from there. But when you go outside your comfort zone consistently, that's where you make the most progress in this. The next thing that really, really makes this process a lot longer is bouncing around. So you commonly see this with programming languages. So maybe you pick JavaScript as your first programming language and you started learning it. At first it was fun, the concepts are so cool, they're sexy, and by about week three, four, five, it starts to get boring and you just start seeing a lot of repetition. Maybe you start building a project, but it's just not as fun. Maybe you build a second project, but it's just not as fun as when you first started. Because you remember when you first started, everything was new and it was just so much fun. So all of a sudden you say, you know what? I'm just not having a lot of fun with this. Let's go to Python or C Sharp. And you just repeat that process over and over again. And that's not how you're going to learn to become a really strong developer. To become a strong developer, you need to learn the depth of the language and depth of programming in general, like really have a strong fundamentals. And that doesn't come from bouncing around. You need to really sit down and focus when things get boring. Because look, to be honest with you, if you want to learn any skill set, if it's an athletic skill, if it's a programming skill, you have to, when things get boring, you have to really be the type of person who just persists, right? Because it, like, especially in sports, like to learn something like footwork and basketball, it's actually super boring. Like that's not the sexy part. The sexy part is like the crossovers, the, the shooting, the cool moves. But the hard part is the the like endless just repetition of some of the fundamentals of like something like footwork. And so most people, they just can't do it. They just can't sit there and when things get boring, they just can't like stick around and persist. But if you can be the type of person who can persist, in other words, you can sit there when things get boring with whatever programming language you're learning or whatever you know skill that you're trying to learn, you're gonna be the type of person who learns that to a very high degree. You'll stand out where other people don't and that's the type of person who can get paid a lot of money or just get hired very quickly. So persist as long as you can, but here's the thing, if you're gonna to decide to learn a different skill or a different programming language in this, that's totally fine. Make it a rational decision. Don't make it an emotional decision because you just feel like you're a little bit bored or you feel a little anxious that you know XYZ programming language is a new hot thing in the market. So persist as long as you can, don't bounce around, try to stick to one thing and learn a depth of knowledge. The last thing that I noticed that people just really struggle with is a job hunt. So a lot of people, like their job hunt strategy just sucks. Um, you have to think about it this way. A lot of people are coming out of boot camps, uh, colleges, uh, a lot of self-taught developers out there. And if you're competing with all of them based on the tried and true, or the, I should say, the, the traditional strategy of just getting that resume out there, maybe you have a personal website, but it's just kind of bland, the LinkedIn that's not really interesting. I think that that's just not really the road to success these days because everybody's doing it. And if everybody's doing it, then you're just competing with people who are coming out of school who have better credentials than you. I don't have great credentials, so I'm not gonna compete with somebody who's coming out of a good school who has a computer science background. Instead, what I would prefer to compete with them on is making myself stand out from the crowd, making myself stand out in my online presence as somebody who's really passionate about this, who is clearly not just a weekend uh, you know, tutorial watcher who built a, a few projects and is like throwing something out there. Like when they see my online presence, they should see somebody who is like, you know, borderline obsessed with programming, who loves this, who's looking to get this field, who's positive. And who, like I make it easy for them to access my projects. I make it easy for them to find out more about who I am through my personal website. My LinkedIn is different, it stands out. My resume is different, it stands out in some meaningful or small way. Again, the reason I do this is because I'm not competing with people on their level. Like my strength is not that I went to Harvard and I got a computer science degree. I don't play with people on their game. Like that's you know the equivalent of if I'm gonna play basketball and somebody's like a lot taller than me, I'm not gonna go to the hole every time because they're just gonna block me, right? Like that just doesn't make sense. I'd rather like focus on my strength and try to compete with them on my strengths, not on their terms. So you have to figure out how to stand out. Remember that recruiters are people, like people who are gonna hire you are human beings and they wanna know who you are as a human. So they're not gonna hire a piece of paper, right? They're not just gonna look at a piece of paper and say, I'm gonna hire this person. They wanna see somebody who's interesting, who they wanna to get to know more about. So always be thinking about that. Like really focus on the job hunt when it comes to that and don't just do what everybody else is doing. 
So look guys, I hope this video is helpful. These are the five things I've really thought through and really seen patterns of behavior that hold people back. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Now look, if you're an aspiring developer, so if you're somebody who's self-teaching and you are struggling with this, or maybe you just don't know if your roadmap is gonna get you to where you wanna go in as short a period of time as possible, and you're looking for a professional mentorship, then I'd highly recommend checking out my mentorship program. My mentorship program is all about building a roadmap for you to get to where you wanna go, providing support and guidance along the way, as well as figuring out the best strategies for you to land your first job. So if you're interested in that, I'd highly recommend booking a free career strategy session. During that call, I'd really figure out what your biggest obstacles are right now, what you wanna do as far as your aspirations and goals are, and then if my mentorship program is a good fit, I'm happy to tell you what that would look like. So if you wanna book that call, check out the link in the description below and book that call and we can go from there. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and as always, 